Hey guys, I am Mr. Crocker, and today we're going to be talking about growth and change in the Northeast. So really the, the main idea of this lesson, I think, is, is that immigrants have added a lot to the United States. You know, the, except for, except for the, the native indigenous people who were already living here, everyone who has come here came as an immigrant. The first people came from, from Britain and then also uh, Scandinavia, Germany, those types of places. And after, after that first wave, people started and, and sort of settled and began to build and another wave of immigrants would come and another wave and another wave. And, and that's just been the history of the United States has, has been a, a lot of immigration. And the things that have brought people here have been religious freedom. Okay. We, we do not have a government that decides or dictates what sorts of religious beliefs or practices you're allowed to have. So people wanted that because that, that is not the case everywhere in the world. Some places you're not allowed to make those kinds of choices for yourself. And the other big thing has been economic opportunity, jobs, the ability to make money, uh, an economy that is thriving and profitable, right? So that you can either make money for yourself or you can make money and send it back home to, to family wherever wherever they happen to be. So So those types of opportunities have brought a lot of people to the United States. Um, early on, we had a place called Ellis Island. And Ellis Island is, is in New York, and the Statue of Liberty is right there. And <clears throat> it was like a checkpoint that a lot of immigrants would come from. And it made sense because they were coming from Europe, from that area. So that was the closest harbor the closest point for them to land at by ship right and at ellis island they would go through these people's records check their id and even it says in the book make sure that they were healthy before they let them come into the united states so that, that's that's interesting i had no idea that we were health checking people at the border but in today's you know world with coronavirus it, it seems to be like that might have been a good idea back then to check, to check for health of immigrants. Um, so the book says that they did that. And then it goes on, our, our chapter, lesson four, goes on to say that immigrants have added a lot of things to our society, a lot of inventions. And I feel like that's a really important idea because in today's political world, you have a couple of competing ideas about immigrants. One idea seems to be that immigrants will come in and take opportunity. And the other idea seems to be that immigrants add to the opportunity. And that, that idea makes a lot more sense to me. You know, when you have more people coming to the United States, those people have needs and wants when we talked about economy those people are going to come into the united states they're going to buy things and they're also going to produce things that we can buy and so it's it's all of these people wanting to be here that helps to drive economic activity and our lesson goes into some detail about some of the contributions that they have made. So, for example, Albert Einstein contributed a lot to the field of, of science. He was from Germany. Okay. Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, was from Scotland. And so, you know, when you have an invention like that, Alexander Graham Bell invents the telephone. People want telephones, right? This, this invention can create economic activity. Same thing with a light bulb. Thomas Edison invented a light bulb, and then it was improved later on by, by another immigrant, and all of a sudden, light bulbs in every house. So it, these new ideas, innovations, advances in technology, 
They, they help to create economic activity and to get those kinds of innovations, you need people. You need people with ideas. And so I think the point that the book, The Lesson is making is that having a place where immigrants want to be is not a, is not a negative thing. I don't think that they should be viewed as people who will steal jobs. I think that they should be viewed as people who will contribute to turning this wheel. You know, if you think about a river and one of those old fashioned water wheels, well, the, the river and the water in it are sort of like the people of the United States. And the more people we have, the more people with wants and needs demand, the faster we can turn that wheel that is the economy. And so I, I really feel like that is the right way to view immigrants. Um, so we have all of these people coming into the United States and this was, you know, they were coming to work, like we already said, and in those days, working conditions were very bad. <laughs> okay, so they, a lot of people, men, women, children, were working in factories, and they, there were no laws like we have today saying that you have to have a fire alarm, you have to have lights that make things easy to see, you have to have ledges painted with yellow tape. None of these none of these laws regarding safety or wages existed. You know, today we have a minimum wage. I don't know what the minimum wage is, to be honest, but we have a level that is set and it is illegal to pay a person below that wage. That did not exist then. Okay. That did not exist. You could pay people anything you wanted to pay them. And if people chose to accept that job and go to work there, they were paid that. And so what we, what started to happen was we had a lot of people working very long hours and sometimes in very dangerous situations. And we had some terrible things happen. We had like factory fires and these factories like a, in the chapter, it mentions a garment factory. So this is a place where they're making clothing or some kind of textile, could be carpet, could be curtains, could be rugs, could be a lot of things. The place catches fire, the doors are locked, and these people can't get out. And it was, you know, it's a terrible thing. And so the, the workers started to get together and form what they call labor unions. And a labor union is when all of the people who work in an industry, like for instance, there's a teacher union that all teachers have a chance to belong to. They get together and they say, this is the deal we want. Okay, we, we want these conditions and we will work for this if you meet our demands. And so it, pushes back against the idea that the employer, the, the guy who owns the factory or that business, it pushes back against the idea that he can just pay whatever he wants. And if you say, well, no, I can't work for a dollar a day. He says, okay, well, that guy will do it. Right. I'll hire him. You're out of a job. Goodbye. I, I mean, I can, I can understand where, we might want to have freedom to compete over labor and, and how having to pay $5 a day might limit the number of jobs that a factory is able to offer to people. But conditions were very bad. And so people got together and negotiated as a group, as a union, and they were able to improve the conditions that they were working in. They were able to get, you know, a limited number of hours that they had to work in a week. The weekend, the weekend, we all like the weekend. That was a result of labor unions negotiating minimum wage, saying that you have to pay people at least a certain amount of money for them to come work. Child labor laws, 
became a thing. So there were children working in factories until we came up with laws that said it was illegal to make children work. I remember when, when I was in high school, I worked at Target. I was at Target, and there was some kind of a law about how anyone who was under the age of 18 could not work past midnight. And, you know, Target stays open late. And so after the store closes, uh, you're putting things back on the shelves, putting things back where they go, getting the store ready to open the next day and look good, right? And so I had a closing shift one night and I was probably 16 or 17 years old and I was just there doing my job. I didn't know about this rule, but one of the managers found out that I was still in the building after midnight working and, and he was very <laughs> concerned that he was going to be in trouble because now today it's not okay to have minors, it's what they call people under the age of 18, working past midnight because we have these kinds of laws that have come about as a result of workers getting together and negotiating for better working conditions, better wages, safety, for those things to be given to them, to be, to be put into law so that all workers can have those. And that is lesson four. Immigrants came over looking for work. They found work, but it was very dangerous and sometimes paid badly. And eventually through collective bargaining, they were able to make some improvements and get, get better conditions to work in.